Hi, this is Rob from Sky Vista Productions. Today I want to give a tutorial about my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K workflow for raw footage in DaVinci Resolve uh, and also explore just a little bit the amazing highlight recovery uh, that is available with this raw codec. I'm in DaVinci Resolve 15. This is the studio version. I think everything I'm doing today would work in the free version as well. I'm going to assume that most of you have some familiarity with Resolve. Um, very quickly, this is the media page. Over here is my Samsung T5 500 gigabyte SSD that I connect directly to the pocket camera. I've imported it into this project. I head over here to the edit page. This is a particular clip that I'm gonna work on and show you um, how we can recover some of these highlights up here. So we're gonna head over to the color page. Typically, I think when you go to this color page, what you're going to see is the decode using project is set on, which will gray out all of your parameters here. All you need to do is change it to clip and then you have access to these. So this is the raw camera profile. This obviously only applies if you have raw footage. It will only be available if you shot in raw. I did shoot uh, in the film setting on the Blackmagic camera, Cinema DNG 4 to 1 raw. I'm going to make a few more nodes here. I don't really need these for the raw part, but I'm going to make some adjustments in these later. Alternate S, usually put about four of those up there. The first thing that I will do is add a Blackmagic LUT. And this just gets it from the very flat uh, profile of the film log into something a little more usable. Blackmagic Design. Scroll down to Blackmagic Film to Extended Video. Just drop that on there. So that makes a difference right away. You can see that. Um, clicking back and forth between the two. Here I'm going to add another LUT. And... Um, the reason I'm doing it this way is I know that I'm going to add a LUT to these eventually and instead of starting out and adjusting all of my parameters first and then dropping a LUT on it, um, if you have the LUTs first then you know exactly what you're adjusting and you don't throw everything off by putting the LUT on top of what you've already got dialed in. I have been using, I've been making some of my own, but a starting point, um, go to film looks. In black magic i think this one worked pretty well uh it's a rec 709 kodak film emulation type of thing i'm just going to drop that into this node it's way too strong uh, so i will go down here to the key page so as i bring that down you can see from nothing to max uh, so i just kind of dial that in where i think is a good starting point just to give it a little richness probably somewhere around there is fine so once those two LUTs are there now I can start making my basic adjustments in the raw settings here is a beautiful thing about raw white balance is adjustable in post completely non-destructively it's as if you had just done it in camera uh, as shot it looks a little blue to me when I do that maybe because I was just looking at the cloudy setting but obviously it was a cloudy day I will go to cloudy that looks pretty good. Generally speaking, as you go down, these warm up from daylight to cloudy to shade. Uh, so shade is going to be the warmest setting. That looks pretty good. Might compromise and just go with cloudy because I know I don't have much saturation in there yet. And when I add it, it's going to really pump up those orange colors. ISO is set to 200, which is probably pretty good. I guess that's where I shot it. It was an overcast day for sure, but I can change that non-destructively as if I had done it in camera, uh, which is why I shoot in RAW all the time, because I can make mistakes with my ISO when I'm shooting and fix them later. A 200 is probably pretty good. Just looking at my scopes over here, that looks probably about right. You can see the highlights are clipping, but we're going to work on that. I do suggest that you leave, even if you're shooting at a low ISO, I don't shoot at 100 ISO. Um, I shoot at at least, you know, 320 maybe 400 so that I have some latitude even as low as 200 which I think I did in this case um, but that way if for any reason I feel like I need to go darker I, I have some room to go down so I leave a little bottom open for that 
Um, color temperature and tint, those are just uh, a product of what you select over here. I'm not going to mess with those at this point. I really don't change the exposure ever. Um, sharpness I will leave because I think it's fine. Highlights are at 34. Um, let's bring those down to zero for right now. Shadows, color boost, saturation. Here's, here's an interesting thing. On this saturation, I was completely blown away by the amount of saturation that I can add. I'm going to hit alternate F just to get us to a bigger screen that we can see. If, if you're not familiar with this, I'm using my scroll wheel to adjust the size of the window. I've got that saturation now cranked up to 100%, and it's too much, but it's it doesn't destroy it, uh, which, you know, shooting in um, any other codec, it would just be ridiculous and clownish looking at that point. Um, so I have been routinely setting saturation on my raw footage at 70 and 80, I think, without a problem. I'm going to leave it about there for now. I typically adjust the shadows more than the gain. They're both low end. It's my understanding that the shadows do not mess with the midtones and the gain does. Um, I'm sorry, the lift, I meant to say. S but when I look at the scopes and make those adjust adjustments, they look like they're kind of doing pretty close to the same thing. But I do stick with the shadows, bring them down a little bit because I like that richer look. I'm not a big fan of the low contrast look. I know it's really popular, but I like a richer look to my footage, and you may disagree, and that's fine. That's a pretty good basic adjustment. I'm going to toggle off. So we went from before to after, before, after. So it's looking good, but I do not like washed out skies. So we're going to see what we can do about that. If I bring these highlights down, minus 100, you can start to see, hopefully with the YouTube compression, you can see that there are some clouds and there is some blue um, mixed in here. I don't want to bring my highlights down to nothing because there's some nice highlights on these leaves and out in the field. So I'm just going to leave that at zero for now. Contrast, might bring that up just a little bit. What the contrast really does is it deepens the shadows it raises the highlights and it leaves the midtones pretty much alone because this doesn't have um, the additional adjustment of the pivot point, so it's pretty much leaving the uh, midtones alone, which is usually a good thing. So I like that with a little bit of contrast. Um, I'm going to move now out of my raw settings. By the way, highlight recovery is checked, probably because I had done that before, but just check that. I recommend doing that. I, I do it every time and it does give you some more flexibility. So we'll leave the raw settings. Just going to go over to the color wheels. What we want to work on is this sky because I know there's some detail up there. There are a few ways that we could do this. I'm going to show you one that I think worked well. Okay, so we want to work on this sky up here and see if we can bring back some of the details so we don't have it just washed out. I'm going to go to this node. I'm just going to call it sky. I'm going to use this selection pin and uh, we're going to alternate F to get bigger so I can see. And I'm just going to outline these trees. There are other ways to do this. This is one of them. I'm going to show you basically how to do this. You can take as much time as you want to get really specific with this edit. And we'll just connect the two. Once you connect them, then this section is live. Anything that I change with my wheels will be um, just affecting this section. So obviously these are highlights, the brightest parts. The gain is what represents the brightest parts. I'm going to just turn this gain down. And you can see lots of detail coming into that sky. You can actually see some blue, some, um, some blue wispiness and gray clouds. All the stuff that we really didn't even know was there before. And I've done that without losing any of my nice color and detail down here. So if I go over to the left here, I can turn off the outline and you can see what we've done. Obviously that's horrible, um, but we can adjust that with the softness. So I'm gonna soften it up. And then I can adjust um, where it actually sits. So I'll pull it down so we don't have that white on the horizon. Um, 
so that's that's pretty good so we went from that original to this um, might be a little bit overdone but I, I'm purposely doing that so I can make sure that you see the adjustments that we've made so that looks great one thing that we can do to make sure that we are keeping especially if we're more precise with this and and we really want it to follow we can just track this over time so that uh, we don't end up with the darker parts overlapping some of these trees more as the image moves so we're just going to go to our tracker which is here so I'm going to start my track resolve does an amazing job as you can see right at the end we had this extra little uh, spot so I'm just going to drag this to the the end point so it's covered and then I'll track it backwards to make sure that we don't have any problems on the other end which you can see we do so again I'm gonna fix that just start to track the other way make sure we're good all the way across okay uh, I'll turn off the outline over here set that to off and so our new shot looks like this Okay, so if we go back to that, I'm going to toggle that on and off. That's the original washed out sky. That's with a prettier sky. You can see there are some issues here that I would work on more. Um, and I wouldn't do it this much. You can definitely go overboard uh, and it starts to look like a really bad Photoshop HDR. Looks like a silk unicorn painting or something. So you don't want to do that. Obviously you want it to look natural. So I would pull this back. I just want you to be able to see what we did. So one final thing I want to do is, now that we can see some of these colors, I'm just going to bring a little more blue into my gain. Maybe right about there. Looks pretty. I hope that's helpful for you. If this was, please subscribe and like. Um, if you have any constructive criticism, I also appreciate that. So thank you very much, and I hope you all have a great day.